What's up guys, Nexi here. Today I want to share my thoughts and experience about Anycubic Chiron. Stay tuned! At first, when Anycubic reached me and asked me to make unbiased review of this printer, I was very excited as up till now my favorite large-scale 3D printer with affordable price was CR10S. And the Chiron is a very similar to the CR10S and maybe even better as it comes with a bigger scale and with some slightly design changes but also with some extra features like auto level, touchscreen, ultra base pro and 1000 watt power supply. I couldn't wait to test it. But after when I spent a few days and nights with this machine, I came across with some really good stuff and some bad stuff. Let's go. As you can see, my workbench is totally in a mess and before I explain why, let me start first with the good stuff like specs and the features of this machine. Chiron frame is made of these metal aluminum extrusions a very simple and strong frame design, similar to the CR10S and CR10S4, but with some few changes. For example, there is no extender control box, everything is attached to the frame underneath the printer, and that's why the Chiron has these extended legs on the corners. Filament spool holder is also attached to the metal frame, and it's easy accessible, so you can change the filament pretty quickly. On the heatbed stepper motor, there is a stamper damper which lowers the heatbed vibration, which is nice. On the front right side, there is a color touch screen for navigation through the software. Screen has a good viewing angle and it's a quick and responsive. Software is a very nice, simple to use and similar to the i3 Mega. Chiron has a huge build volume of 400 by 400 by 450 mm on the Z-axis, so you can print some huge 3D objects. To make prints stick to the heated bed, Anycubic used this Ultra Base Pro glass surface, which works great, and when it's heated up, the filament sticks very good to the glass, and when the surface cools down, it shrinks on the micro level, and it's kind of push your model from the glass. So you don't need to use almost any kind of adhesive or force when you remove your prints from the glass plate, which is great. The machine has auto level feature, and it used this magnetic micro switch as a probe, you simply attach it to the X carriage and when you click on the auto level, printer will probe and make measurements on 25 different places or entire glass surface and store them in a memory, which then you can fine tune in a real time each of the specific points or instead all at once to get that perfect first layer. This auto level actually works very good and after when I did it once, I test print this G code which was on the micro SD card called the bed level test and I got perfect results from the first try, which is very impressive consider the size of the heated bed. Instead of the standard Z-stop micro switch, there is a sensor type switch on the both sides of the Z-axis, which is very good, as when you hone the printer, both of the Z lead screws get a level on the both sides every time. Hot end is 24 volt type E3D V5 clone, and it's all metal hot end, so it can be warm up up to 260 degrees. Combined with a Titan clone extruder, you can print all kinds of filaments such as PLA, PTG, TPU, ABS or nylon on this machine without any mods and since it uses the E3D nozzle type, you can change to all kinds of nozzle size pretty cheaply. On the side of the X carriage, there is a separate cooling fan for the filament. It has a 3D printer duct nozzle, angle is good and it blows air where it should. Since the duct air nozzle is 3D printed part, I protect it from the heat block with a thermal tape, as I'm not sure what kind of filament Anycubic used to print this part, as my printer is more like prototype test unit, so this might not be in a final product. I'm not really sure. For powering the heat bed, there is a huge 1000 watt, 24 volt, 42 amp power supply, with a two external MOSFET, and it can warm up heat bed up to 100 degrees, which is awesome considering the massive size of the heated bed and no insulation material underneath. My guess is that with insulation under the heated bed, the temperature can be even higher and the warming time could be faster. I will definitely install insulation on my heated bed as that mode can save electricity bill as well. For powering the motherboard and other components, there is a second power supply in the control box. The motherboard is a 3 Gorilla and it has replaceable stepper drivers, which is nice as you can upgrade this printer in the future with some silent stepper drivers like TMC2100 or 2130 for example. For offline printing there is a supply microSD card with adapter or you can connect the printer to PC or Mac and print from computer directly. 
For slicing software, printer can use Cura, Simplified 3D or other type of slicers. On the Cura and the Simplified 3D, you already have the printing profiles for the CR10S4 that you can use with this machine. Beside the printer, in a box, there is also a spare hot end, the thermistor and the Teflon tube. You also get the tools and very good instructions in a paper form or on the microSD card. Instructions are good, very easy to follow, assembling is not complicated and you need around 20 or 30 minutes to assemble the printer. And now let's talk about the negative side and the issues that I have with this machine. First, when I got my test unit, the shipping boss was pretty beat up and when I opened the package my ultra base glass was broken and the heat bed was bent. Here it is. Alright, I can't really blame Anycubic because of the lousy post office, so I contact Anycubic and I explain the situation. I send them few photos as a proof and they answer me pretty quickly and offer to send me free of charge new ultra base heated bed with the pre-soldered wires, screws, washers and instructions how to replace all broken parts. Basically just plug and play which was great. I received parts in around 5 days but when I replaced the heated bed and installed the ultra base I found some more issues on my Chiron, some related to the bad shipping and some related to the quality control. Starting first of my replacement heated bed on which the thermistor sensor was not cleaned properly from the soldering flux which results unstable and random temperature on the screen. Temperature was jumping up and down completely random. At first I thought that the heat bed temperature sensor was broken but after the close inspection I found that it was pretty dirty from soldering flux. After I cleaned it with the acetone and the toothbrush including the contacts on the back side of the heated bed I got stable and the normal temperature readings. After that I found that the heat bed movement was not smooth as it should be. And when I recheck and readjust a centric spacer I discover more QC issues. On the current there is a 12 bearing wheels, 6 on each side of the heat bed platform. There is a 3 adjustable eccentric spacers on one side and 3 non-adjustable spacers on each of these aluminum extrusions. The problem on my test unit was that on the right side, instead of the spacers, I had adjustable eccentric spacers which should not be there as they are different size and that damaged one polyurethane wheel which I had to replace after. Since I don't have the spare spacer these dimensions, I had to cut the eccentric spacer by hand to make it fit as I didn't want to wait again to get the spare one. After that I recheck all screws on my Chiron and I found some more QC issues. For example, on each side of the printer there is a two screws with a T-nut inside of these extrusions and they hold this extrusion and the X-carriage in a place. My both screws on the left side was not tied properly and this small T-nut was not in a lock position inside this extrusion and the left side was loose. To fix this issue it was not such of the big deal as these two screws are easy accessible. During the assembly I found some more QC related issues. This dual Z sensor stop switch that should stop Z carriage was not working properly. Right side switch plate was bent and the machine was hitting on it instead of stopping it. And this upper metal pin was bent as well and I had to take it off and bend it back with my pliers and reinstall it again. And finally when I thought alright that was all, I turn on the printer and I hear this. I got constant gridding sound even when I turn off the printer. The fan must be loose or broken in a shipping or something to sound this bad. Either so, I will definitely replace both of the cooling fans. And now we are coming to the print quality and some more QC issues. Try after try, I got nothing but a terrible print results and under extrusion problems combined with a T0 error on the screen which was constantly popping out on the screen just right after a few minutes of printing. The temperature of the hot end was not constant and it was much lower than it should be. 
Extruder was skipping no matter how much I tied down the adjusting wheel on the extruder or increased the temperature on the hot end. After I checked the hot end with my thermal camera, I discovered that the temperature readings on the heat block was completely different comparing to the screen. The temperature was much higher than it should be, which results nozzle clogs and the filament skipping. After I disassembled the X carriage cover, I found out that the hot end thermistor was not installed correctly. Thermistor was barely inside this tiny copper tube and it should be all the way in to be able to read real temperature of the heat block. And since I already disassembled the heat block, I applied this thermal tape to block some of the heat and protect duck air nozzle from melting down as I'm not sure what kind of the filament Anycubic use to print this part. After that, since I checked pretty much everything, I decided to check the feed rate using the simple G command and I found out that the Chiron feed rate needs to be at least 7-10% to more as I wrote in a G code 100mm and the printer extrude only 93mm of the filament instead of 100 after that, I print test cube few times using 105-110% flow increase in Acura and I found that the 110% flow increase works the best with my Chiron. So Anycubic needs to fix this issue and calibrate extruder steps in a firmware if they are not already fixed this issue in a final unit. After that, I got almost perfect print quality from my Chiron. I test print 40x40mm Hello Cube in only one parameter on the wall all the way up to 450 millimeters on the z-axis and the results was perfect all the way up to the top. And finally I could print 3D Benji and check the actual print quality of this machine. I use this easy print blue PLA from the local company called 3D Prima. They are located here in Sweden but they work internationally as well. They have all kinds of filaments, printer parts and 3D printers as well. I will leave link in the video description so you guys can check it. And 3D Benji finally looks near perfect with the 110% flow increase and CR10S4 printing profile in Acura. Finally I got some nice printing results with my Chiron and now since I fix all the issues and I tune the settings I was finally happy with the print quality. Well that was a heck of the work for the past 2 days and nights that I spent with this machine to make it work as it should. I really don't know what to say about it as I kind of expect that my printer will have some issues but to be honest I never expect that my printer will have so many quality control related issues. And in the end can I recommend it? Well if I completely forget about the bad shipping and all QC issues I will say that Anycubic Caron is a printer with a great potential and it could be a very good choice but since I don't have another Keron to confirm this and I don't know for sure if Anycubic will deal with all these issues, I can only wait to see what kind of feedback the community will report about this machine. I think that's fair enough. Let me know guys what you think in the comment section and if some of you want to order this printer in the near future or just want to read the feedbacks, check link in the video description, I will keep you updated. Thanks for watching and I see you next time. Bye.